free to uh, to come down. We'll be more than happy. Uh, Edmond just told me that we can stay here until midnight to answer any question and that he will be with us here the whole time. So, uh, and actually, by the way, before I, I uh, go through my, my final presentation, I really want to uh, ask you guys to put your hands together for these guys here at Empire. They actually facilitated for, uh, for us and coordinated for all of us to be here today. So, you know, training, training for us is very important and it's, it's amazing to see that they are also uh, very involved with training, making sure that you guys understand the technology that is out there and how it works and everything. That shows a lot of commitment from their end to, uh, to you guys. So we really appreciate them putting this together and having us here and hosting us for the day. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go through uh, some uh, very specific stuff on the QL. As I said, they are very similar, the QL and the CL, so I don't have to go and say and repeat the same thing. So, uh, oh, if you can dim the lights, that would be awesome. Yeah, we like the romantic setting. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be playing some romantic music in a moment. Intimate evening with the console. So what is the QL? The QL is actually the little brother for the CL. Uh, literally, the QL was born after the CL. That's why they're very similar. That's why I, I kept saying that, you know, all these features are also on the QL because the, uh, the QL shares a lot of these things that are on the CL are here. Uh, as far as the sound, we're using the same Mic Pre. There was a new Mic Pre that was developed for the CL. So it's uh, Mic Pre, Work Clock, A2D, D2A, all that stuff that was developed for the CL was implemented for the QL. So it's the same thing in there. Uh, it has Dante built in. It has the same premium rack that you have on the CL. You have it uh, on the QL. The uh, The... Dante is built in, so there is a lot of a lot of flexibility on the QL. But once again, it's just a little brother for the family. We uh, we're growing the family, and that's what uh, came. The uh, the QL has two versions. Remember, on the CL you have three versions: the five, the three, and the one. Here you have the QL five and the QL one. They have the option of interfacing with the same real boxes that you have with the CL. So you have the 3224, you have the 1608. I mentioned earlier that there were two more options that I was going to talk about it uh, during the QL presentation. And the two options are the RI8 and the RO8. RI means remote input, and that's only eight input channels. The RO is the remote output channels, and that's only eight output channels. They're all uh, via Dante. You can utilize the RI and the RO with the, uh, with the CL as well. It's just that uh, they came a little bit later, so that's why they were built into this PowerPoint presentation. So how do we look at them? So let's begin with the QL5. The QL5 uh, will allow you to mix up to 64 mono channels. You have 32 faders plus two, you have uh, the iPad area where you can see the iPad in here. So you have the 32 faders in front of you. You have the extra two, so 32 plus two. Those faders, once again, they could do anything. You can mix up to 64 channels. On the back, you have 32 inputs built in. You have a 64 by 64 Dante module. You can use that Dante module to expand it. And once again, you can do up to 64 channels uh, via Dante. And uh, you also have the eight stereo inputs that by default are controlling the eight internal effects. You have the same effects that are on the CL are going to be on the QL as well. Difference here is that on the CL you have the 24 mixes plus the eight matrix. Here on the QL you have 16 mixes plus eight matrix. So you can do up to 24 uh, monitor mixes. Local I.O. on the back of the QL5 you have 32 inputs built in and 16 outputs built in. So you have connectors on the back and we will see that in a moment. The uh, QL1, which is the uh, little brother, the Q could be rack mountable. So basically you remove the side panels, you put rack gear on it, 
and it's rack mountable, not a problem. You have a total of 16 plus 2 on the faders. You have 16 inputs by 8 outputs. The Dante port, the Dante module on the back of the QL1 is a 32 by 32 uh, Dante module. So basically, you can mix up to 32 input channels plus the 8 stereo inputs that, once again, by default, are getting the signal from the internal effects. So you have a lot of options uh, to expand in there. The back, once again, 16 inputs, 8 outputs. Now, uh, here is the overview of the QL5. So once again, the QL5 has two connectors for lamps, 32 inputs, 16 outputs, internal power supply only, two card slots for expansion, 64 by 64 Dante, very similar to what you saw on the CL already, as you can see, look, Two-track AES, EBU, GPI, work clock, MIDI. You see, very, very similar. So that is the, uh, the QL5. The QL1, which will be smaller, you have one connector for the lamp. As I mentioned, 16 inputs by 8 outputs. You have the 32 by 32 Dante. You still have the two card slots. So, you know, QL5, QL1, they both have the two card slots for expansion. Same thing, the internal power supply, the eight omni outputs, and the two-track AES, EBU, GPI, MIDI, work clock. Very similar. The input and output, uh, it's, what it, uh, it's different between them. Now, here you have features that are very similar. I mentioned that the CL and the QL are very similar to each other. They, uh, you know, for example, 300 scenes. Difference of, uh, between the two, of course, is based on the fader count, the amount of fader banks that you have. On the QL, you have four fader banks or four layers that you can build those faders however you want to use them. You have an input and an output delay, very similar to the CL, it's the same. You have the channel EQ, you have the dynamics, you have the 16 DCA, the eight mu groups. That's all the same between the two of them. On the CL, if you remember, you have 16, uh, you have, uh, 16 user defined keys. Here you have 12. They both have the multiple user levels, so you can control the access that different people are going to have to the console. How much access, how much stuff they can change, or how much stuff we're not going to allow them to change. We can create different users. That's the same between the two of them. You have the GPI interface. A lot of similarities between the two of them. There is a, a lot of flexibility in there. Now, on the operation side, when you look at the CL and you look at the QL, you see that the QL has a little bit less amount of buttons or encoders. So we do have different uh, ways that we can control the console. There was something that got implemented on the CL that transferred to the QL, which is something that is called touch and turn. And touch and turn, what it does is you have an encoder on that control surface. You touch any menu, any menu that has a value, a rotary value on that uh, screen. And when you touch it, you can adjust it with the touch and turn. So guess what? That control is always in the same thing. So I can touch, for example, mix one, and I can change it there, or mix two, or mix three, or I can change the threshold on a dynamic, or I can change the gain on an EQ or the frequency. Just touch on it, and the touch and turn encoder will allow you to make the changes to that parameter. The other thing is we still have the selected channel. Even though the selected channel area doesn't have the same amount of buttons that you have on the CL, it is very similar. So you still have enough buttons, enough encoders there to navigate the channel. Remember, select, adjust, store. It also works the same way here on the QL as it, uh, it did on the CL. Uh, one more thing uh, here, the touchscreen. The same touchscreen that we have on the CL is the same touchscreen on the QL. When you look at the QL1, that touchscreen looks pretty big uh, because that system is very small. We're using the same size uh, on all of them. So it's very easy to navigate these, uh, that visual. It's, uh, it's very present in there. The, uh, the other thing, the advanced features when we operate, once again, the faders are going to be the same. 
the uh, display where you have those uh, channel names, the colors, all that stuff is implemented the same way that it was implemented on the CL. So it's very easy to navigate. It's very visual. Once you start labeling those channels, you have the different fader banks. And uh, the fader banks are right here. If you look at the console, it's right here. And you have different layers for them. So basically, I have A and B. A is going to be fixed. So basically, you see like 1 through 32, 33 to 64, so on and so forth on the QL5. If you press the first and the last button at the, first, at the same time, you go to a B bank. And on that B bank, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 layers that you can build however you want those faders to behave. So... It doesn't matter where things land on your console when you're on a fixed layer. I can always go to one of those user layers and I can line things up however I want to uh, I want to have those faders. It could be an input next to an output next to a DCA. However, it doesn't need to make sense to me. If it makes sense to you, however you want to do it. So you have four of them. And uh, once again, very flexible, very easy to, uh, to navigate. The QL, uh, in one way, it's very different be, uh, to the CL because remember, the CL is all based on those uh, real boxes via Dante. The QL has the built-in inputs that we saw already and the built-in outputs. It's a higher input and output count, especially on the QL5 where you have 32 inputs and uh, 16 outputs. Remember, QL1, 16 input, 8 outputs. It's all in one. But you have Dante built in. So a lot of times people still don't trust that Cat 5e cable to travel the audio. They still want to use that analog snake. And if you have an analog snake where you are, well, to tell you the truth, you can put a QL, you plug all the analogs, all the analog inputs to the back, and that's it. And you said, okay, so why am I spending the extra money on a QL? Because of Dante, if I'm not going to use Dante, well, you can. Because I can take those inputs going into the analog ports on the back of the console. And you know what I can do with my Dante? I can do my multi-track recording via Dante. That's it. So I have my analog snake. I'm hitting the console. I'm not using Dante to communicate the stage with the console. But I'm going to use Dante to communicate from the console to the computer and from the computer to the console. So that's one of the, uh, the examples for, da uh, for Dante. Or you can use Dante to communicate with the real on stage for expansion. For example, on a QL5, I can say I'm going to use the 32 inputs on the back, but I'm also going to add a 3224 real to have my 64 channels. Or I can say I'm going to have two reels, 32 inputs, and I'm going to do my 64 channels from the real boxes. Remember, these are omniports, and once I have them in that network, I can pick and choose whatever I want. Remember, 64 by 64 on the QL5, 32 by 32 on the QL1. Uh, the other thing is, uh, one of the main things on the QL was something that we implemented, which is called port to port. And what port to port allowed you to do is to use the connector on the back of that QL and use it kind of like as a real box. So let's say I have a QL that I'm going to use for monitors. And let's say I'm using a QL5. Let's say I take my inputs from the stage and I patch them to the 32 inputs on the back of the QL. Now, via Dante, I can send those 32 inputs to my CL or to another QL or any Dante device at the front of house. If I'm using a CL or if I'm using a QL and I'm using that port to port, the front of house console could have the control of the mic pre. So in theory, what, that, uh, what the inputs are doing on the back of the console, they're acting as a real box. So that is called port to port. The, uh, the other thing is, a lot of times people say, well, you know, the QL is it's a cute little brother. It's nice, but, you know, it's a very small mixer. 
It is. It's very portable. But let me tell you something. It has a lot of flexibility and a lot of power. Think about it. That premium rack with, that, with the Rupert Neve devices that we have on the CL, it's also included in the QL. It's right there. The same effects that are on the CL are on the QL. Uh, we also have Dan Dugan Auto Mixers. And Dugan is an industry standard when it comes to auto mixers. If, uh, anybody here not familiar with Dan Dugan? No? Yes? Maybe? Don't be afraid. It's okay. Okay. Dan Dugan, um, he's the industry standard when it comes to auto mixer. And, and a lot of times uh, we encounter people that they said, well, I don't want an auto mixer because that's what I get paid for. This is another tool. When you uh, watch a TV show, for example, David Letterman or any one of those talk shows where you have multiple people sitting on a couch with multiple microphones, you know that the guy is not moving faders up and down. It happens way too quick. You know how it gets done? It gets done by a Dan Dugan auto mixer. It's a tool. So basically what this system is doing is sharing the gain between those microphones and whoever is talking gets the gain the other one has gone down, and when somebody talks, that gain gets shared with the next person. There is no gate on it, so there is no threshold involved or anything. You could be whispering, and if you're the one that has the main source, that's the microphone that takes uh, that take the priority. Now, through the years, Yamaha has created a lot of different relations with uh, third-party people. For example, Rupert Nee, for example, Dan Dugan. Yamaha, as I mentioned already, uh, likes to speak a lot of different languages. We don't like to say, well, it's an analog or it's a network and that's it. No, we like to create relations with a lot of different people. That way, at the end of the day, you as the user has the option of choosing what you want to use and how you want to use it. So I'm just going to run something here really quick, which is uh, it's a three-minute video from Mr. Dan Dugan. He's not going to show the example on how exactly it works, but he will give you a, a good reference on how the system works, how his mixer works, and he will also talk to you a little bit about that, that uh, relation that we have with Yamaha uh, and Dan Dugan. So here we go. Hi, I'm Dan Dugan, and I'm pleased to announce that Dan Dugan Sound Design and the Yamaha Corporation have collaborated on a new digital mixer, the QL series. The QL series includes Dugan automatic mixing built into the mixing board. I've been making automatic mixers for 40 years, and I'm proud that we have a very high quality realization of the Dan Dugan automatic mixing in this product. Um, well, the advantages of Dugan automatic mixing are three. First is it reduces the studio noise to the noise of one microphone. The second is that it reduces feedback to the feedback of one microphone. You can have 20 microphones, it sounds like one microphone. And the third thing is a dramatic reduction in comb filtering from uh, my voice going into, say, an adjacent microphone. And all this is done without any gating or threshold at all. Uh, everything is just done by smooth automatic crossfades. Dugan automatic mixing is extremely helpful wherever you have multiple microphones. For example, in corporate events, you might have a panel discussion. Uh, in television, you have news panels, uh, sports panels. Uh, in houses of worship, you have many microphones. In theater, you have many wireless microphones. In all these situations, the Dugan Automatic Mixer will take care of bringing the faders up and down when people are talking and the operator is not chained to the faders anymore, he can just make small adjustments and, and be artistic. Well, my products have always been used in speech applications such as uh, corporate meetings and things like that. And Yamaha has also been very involved in speech applications. And so uh, Yamaha learned about my process and thought that it would be very good for us to get together. And so we collaborated on making a plug-in card uh, which would go into Yamaha mixing boards. And uh, that has been very successful. People are really loving that. So now we've decided to go one step farther and we're going to build the Dugan Automatic Mixing into a Yamaha mixing board itself. 
Well, I worked directly with a team of very talented engineers at Yamaha, and they were dedicated to performing my algorithm with no compromise whatsoever. And we went back and forth. I went to Japan, tested various versions, made suggestions. They had suggestions. And in the end, the result is something that we are both very pleased with. The real advantage of having the Dugan Automatic Mixer built into the console is that there's nothing to hook up. It's all in there and you just patch it on the console's patching screen. You just put the, the auto mixer into the channels that you're going to use and that's all you have to do. If you do live mixing with multiple open microphones, I strongly recommend that you try out Dugan Automatic Mic Mixing. Uh, you'll find that it'll make your job much easier, it'll make your production more consistent, and your audience and you will both be very happy with it. Dan, uh, he's not only a great guy, but you know I've known Dan for a long uh, for a long time. I've known Dan uh, since the mid '90s, uh, mixing a lot of broadcast. And uh, for me, his product has been always something very powerful because once again, it's a tool that we have, uh, and you still need the engineer. The engineer still need to be there to turn that fader on. The engineer still need to be there to move that fader, to adjust the gain, to change the EQ. So that is a tool that is not taking your job away. It's just adding time for you to be able to mix and to be able, as he said, to be artistic with what you're doing. I remember doing a lot of broadcast stuff where basically you will have all those channels open and sometimes looking at a screen where the camera guy is not giving you what you need to see of who's talking now. And you're trying to look at meters on the console, trying to figure out which microphone you're going to open because you're hoping that they're going to give you the shot where you can see who's talking. Having the Dugan Auto Mixer uh, inserted to those channels basically allowed me to have those faders open. And basically, the Dugan Auto Mixer was doing that. So these are tools. These are flexible things that we can really utilize. And once again, this is built in into the console. It's not that you have to go and add something or anything. No, it's all available. Corporate stuff, as he mentioned, when you have multiple people, uh, multiple guys on a panel, where they're using lavalier mics, where you have table mics, you know, within the software on the, in the computer, you can create different Dugan auto mixers. So you have up to a total of 16, but I can go there and I can create, for example, two or three groups. So I can have X amount of channels in one group, and those are the guys on a panel discussion with lofts. I can have a different uh, auto mixer within the same Dugan system, just a different group where I have people with table mics. So it's a lot, uh, a lot of flexibility there. It's all going to be scene dependent as well. Uh, the, the Dugan auto mixer will be implemented to the CL as well on a future firmware update. If, uh, if you want to use it right now, it is available through uh, MY cards. Yes? Good question. Where is the Dan Dugan? The Dan Dugan is under the graphic EQ rack. So I don't know if the guys can, uh, uh, I don't know if you have this visual. You probably don't. We don't know. But anyway, it's under the graphic EQ. So when you go to the rack, there you go. Uh, actually, do you think it's possible to get this one? Can you uh, pan if you don't mind? Sorry, I'm throwing your curveball at 4.59. Uh, so when you uh, go to the rack and you have the graphic EQ rack, if I go to where it says graphic EQ, I can choose here eight channels of Dugan. Now I have eight channels of Dugan Auto Mixer and I have four graphic EQs. If I choose 16 channels of Auto Mixer, then I don't have any graphic EQ. And sometimes people have said, well, but I still want to use my graphic EQs. Reality is that normally if I'm doing a corporate show, I'm not using effects on the console. I'm using effects if I'm mixing music. Or I might be using an effect for something very specific. I have the option of saying, I'm going to use my 16 channels of Dugan and run out of graphic EQs. But wait, because I can go to my effect page and I can say that those effects that I don't need right now for this corporate show could be graphic EQs. 
in that configuration, it's independent. So even if during my corporate show, I have a corporate portion and I have a music portion, I can create two scenes where I have that graphic EQ rack uh, controlling Dugan and graphic EQs on my effect, and I can go and recall another scene that the effect page comes back, and then the Dugan turns into graphic EQs, and I have them inserted to the monitor mixes. It's all scene dependent, so you have a lot of flexibility there. I think there was another couple of questions. Yes, sir. Basically, uh, it's what is called gain sharing. So Dan Dugan, what it does is gain sharing. So as he mentioned on the video, you can have, you know, let's say 10 mics open at the same time. But what the system is doing is using the gain of one microphone. And it's moving that gain among all the channels that are doing. And it happens very quick. There's no gating or anything, so you don't hear any kind of weird stuff going on. So if I'm talking, the entire gain comes to me. If you start talking, the entire game goes to you. If we're having a conversation, that Dugan is going to be switching between you and me. And if somebody else comes, it's going to go there, and it's going to go there, and it's going to go there. If two, if two of us talk at the same time, the game from one microphone is going to be shared between the two of us at the same time. So once again, what you're doing is you're taking the level of one microphone, and you're utilizing that game for all the microphones in there. It works Amazing, to tell you the truth. It works great. Any other question? Yes? Very good. So think about this. So you have 10 guys on a lavalier mic, and you open those 10 microphones. How is your game before feedback going to be? Horrible. I know that. So if I have a Dugan and I have my 10 channels open, I don't have 10 channels open. Well, but I do. Yes, I have my 10 channels open, but I'm only using the gain of one of them. So my gain before feedback increases completely. So if I have a feedback in there, the feedback is on the gain of one microphone, not on the 10 microphones. On a choir, yeah. you said, okay, very good question. Dugan has uh, two different systems. Dugan has the speech system, and Dugan has a music system. The one that is implemented in the QL is the speech system. You can look into the Dugan music system, which is the product that will work on that kind of, uh, of situation. Any other question? Okay, so... CL versus QL. Okay, man, so you've been talking about the CL, you've been talking about the QL. What am I going to do? What am I going to choose? Or if I need to make uh, a decision, what is the difference? What exactly is the difference? Well, in this chart, I have the difference between all of them. So basically here you have the inputs. You see the QL5 has 32, the QL116, 8, 8, 8 on the three CLs. Then you have the outputs. You have the input mixing channels, so on and so forth. So to tell you the quick answer, what is the difference between a CL and a QL? CL has three card slots. QL has two, right? CL has 24 mixes, eight matrix. QL has 16 mixes, eight matrix. CL has the option of having an external power supply. QL has only the internal power supply. QL has more inputs and outputs on the back compared to the CL. Yes. <laughs> so that is the basic difference between the CL and the QL. Now, sometimes people say, okay, so I'm doing different things. What, uh, and this is, uh, this is more stuff. This is pretty much what I, uh, what I was mentioning on the power supply, on the PW800, so on and so forth. So the other thing is, so when am I going to use a CL or why will I use a CL? Well, for example, 
ACL goes a lot into broadcast. Why? Because the broadcast engineers, they always want to have meters in front of them. They want to see those output meters. That way they know what they are sending to that satellite or what is going to the uh, that record deck. On the QL, you don't have the option of the meter bridge. On the CL5, the meter bridge is built in. The CL1, the CL3 is an option. The QL1 or the QL5, they don't have a meter bridge. You have a meter page that you can touch on the screen and you can have the meters in front of you, or I can have the meter page on my computer program so I can see that there. But sometimes people like to have it as part of the console that is not taking the screen at all times to be able to look at those meters. So that could be an application. The other application is going to be depending if I'm mixing monitors, how many outputs do I need? Because if I'm mixing a lot of monitor mixes on the CL, I can do up to 32 monitor mixes between the 24 oxys and the 8 matrix. On the QL, I have the 16 plus the 8, so I have up to 24. So of course, the CL is giving me 8 more. The expansion cards, as I mentioned, on the CL you have three expansion cards, on the QL you have two, so depending what you're doing, you might need that third expansion card. And sometimes people need and want to have that external power supply. That's it. And if I'm doing something where that power supply is needed, the CL is the one that gives me that option. The QL is only on the internal power supply. On the other side, the QL, if you're doing something very portable, for example, the QL could be rack mountable, as I said. We have plenty of people that they basically have what we call the everything rack. I have a QL on top. I have a couple of wireless in there. I have a couple of things in there. Everything is wired. Everything is ready to go. I roll my rack. I connect my speakers, and that's it. You can do that easily with the QL1. Uh, another thing is places where there is an analog infrastructure already. And I don't want to change to a Cat5 cable. I don't want to change to a network. I want to use my analog snake. Well, you have all the inputs built in into the back of that QL, or most of them. So I can just replace that console in there, put the QL, and I can use the analog snake. And I don't have to worry about those external mic pre's for now. Later on, if I want to expand, yeah, I can expand the Via Dante. But right now, I just want to stay this way. So that's another thing. The other thing is, as I mentioned already, the port to port. You know what? I need, to throw an, uh, I need to throw a monitor console in there, but I don't have the money for another reel. Well, if I put a QL in there and I use the port to port, I don't need to buy the reel because that's what the QL connectors are going to give me in there. The other thing is the combination of the two of them. The family. As I said, their family, the CL, the QL, very similar. So this question came up already about the file conversion. I mentioned already that you built something on the QL, you can transfer it to the CL. You built on the CL, you can transfer it to the QL. If it's another product like the PM5D, the M7, the LS9, we have the free download from our website, which is the file conversion program. And you can change that file from one console to the next. So that is supported for, uh, for the product line. The other thing is, as I mentioned already, you can have a computer connected. You can have an iPad connected. You have the console itself. So when you look at it, if I have the console and I have the computer and I have the iPad, I can have three guys doing something at the same time. So once again, one could be on the stage dealing with the musician. Another one could be somewhere on the computer, maybe changing an output port delay or EQing something around while I'm here mixing. You have a lot of flexibility. The stage mix is a free download. The CL, the QL editors, those are free downloads from our website. So you can always go there. And you don't need to have the product to look at this. You can go and you can download the CL editor and the QL editor and have it on your computer and look at it, see exactly what it is. If uh, you get to use the product, you can connect it, but you don't need to have the product to utilize that uh, computer program or even the stage mix. I can put it on demo mode and I can see exactly what the stage mix on my iPad is about. Uh, the other advantage, of course, yes, go ahead. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. I can connect my computer and I can have the meter page there and keep it there, but it's one computer. It's only one computer and one iPad. So if I want to have my meter page on the computer open, then that's all it's going to be doing. Any other question? Okay. So, you know, once again, the advantages in the family, and this is not only the, uh, based on the CL and the QL that expands to other of our consoles, is the expansion cards. Once again, it's to provide you with more freedom of choosing what you want to do and how you want to do it. We don't want to tell you you have to use analog. We don't want to tell you you have to use this specific format. No, the MY cards uh, for expansion will give you the opportunity to pick and choose which kind of format you want to utilize. Uh, for example, another relation that we have, it's with the uh, Lake people. So the Lake processor that everybody wants to use for tuning and everything, there is an MY card for that. So now I don't need that processor outside of the console and wire it and everything. No, I can just put that expansion card on the back of the console and I have my Lake processor to that card. I can connect my tablet computer and I can make the adjustments the same way that I do it with that uh, Lake processor outside of the console. Not only Yamaha develops MY cards for the product, we have a lot of third party uh, corporations building these cards to interface their product or to put their technology into our product via the MY card. The other thing is the capability of cascading. So basically I can take two consoles and I can cascade them together. I need more inputs. I mentioned already that two years ago, the 125th uh, Yamaha anniversary, uh, we had three CL5s at the front of house. Uh, I was uh, at the monitor uh, area with two CL5s where we were cascading. When we're cascading, basically we're not adding outputs. If we cascade them, what we're getting is more inputs. One of the consoles is the master, the, re the uh, second console is the slave. Basically from the slave console, I was sending mixes or auxes to my main console to be able to run the different monitor mixes that we were doing. So in that show, I had a console that had the house band and the orchestra in there. Then I had another console for the guest engineer, uh, for the guest uh, performances, which was the console used by the guest engineers if the band brought a guest engineer. So having the two of them cascaded, let's say I have a guest engineer coming in here. The guest engineer is sending stuff from the slave to my, to my master console, which is, which is hitting this, the wedges on stage. My master console has the house band and the orchestra. So if I have the band, and now the band is playing, but then the orchestra is going to play with them, that signal is coming to my, to my master console, and then from there, I'm going to be hitting the, uh, the monitor. So, for example, my monitors were coming out of the master console. Uh, the closer on that show was Elton John. So Elton John comes and play. I have him on the, uh, on the guest engineer desk. He's mixing there. Okay, he's sending the mixes for Elton Wedges to my main console. The main console is hitting those wedges, but then the orchestra comes to play. The orchestra is on that master console. So basically, Ox1 from the slave console, it's kind of like now a sub in on Ox1 on the master console. So I can send that orchestra via that Ox1 to Elton's wedge that way. So Cascading gives you a lot of flexibility when you need to add the amount of inputs that you're using. Uh, and I mentioned already via MIDI, when we were talking about MIDI, I was utilizing MIDI to change scenes on the console. So basically, I'm storing scene one for whoever. For uh, We had Toto, and we had Sarah McLaughlin, and we had uh, uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire different scenes for different people. If I store something on that console, on the master console, I want the slave console to also save that scene. If I save on the slave scene, I want the master console to also create that scene. If I'm recalling the Elton John scene on my master console, I want the slave console to also change 
to the Elton John scene. So instead of me doing a recall on the, on the master console and a recall on the slave console, I was doing that via MIDI. So it didn't matter if I recall the scene on the master or the slave console, the other console was following to keep up with that change. So these are things that when you're cascading, this technology will allow you to do, and it's very, very flexible. Uh, the other thing, of course, of the advantages, and we, we spend a good amount of time, is the recording. Remember, that two-track, that multi-track recording, it, it's very powerful, and a lot of times we don't think it's simple, and it is very, very easy uh, to get there. It's very easy to do it because it's available. It comes with it. You don't really have to do a lot. Uh, you know, the virtual sound check where you can do the multi-track recording and now I have a musician that wants to rehearse, I don't need to bring the entire band for that rehearsal because I recorded that band. I can play, I can play back my tracks from the computer, but then on the channel where that guitar player it's supposed to be coming from my computer, it's not gonna come from my computer, it's gonna be from my in, from my live input. So I can pick and choose what channels are going to be playing back. It could be coming from the computer. It could be coming from the stage. I have that option of doing that. Sound check. You know what? Now to tune the PA or to do the sound check in this room, I recorded last night's show. We're in a different city. I'm going to play back the show from last night, and that's how I'm going to get my starting point here tonight because the, the uh, band is not coming for sound check. There's a lot of flexibility that this uh, multi-track recording will give you. Guys, other than that, thank you very much for hanging. Uh, thank you. Thank you. If you, have any, if you have any question, we'll be here for a while. Once again, the guys here on Empire are, are great. Uh, if you have any You see, even the mic, I thought the, the, the battery died. So I, I said, wow, even the battery knew where I was done. Yeah, go ahead. Where's the what? Oh, okay. This device here, uh, it's a device called the Joko. Joko is not a Yamaha product or anything related to us. It's a third-party product. It's actually a multi-track device uh, that records via USB. So there is a USB in the back. And basically, I have my multi-tracks in there. Out of that, I'm coming analog into the Rio. And then from the Rio box, because all the consoles are within the Dante network, the Rio box is sending the same signal to all the consoles. Uh, Joko has a Dante version of it, so I could have that connected via Dante. We are utilizing the analog version of it. That, uh, that way we can go to the mic pre and people can adjust the head amp on it. The, oh, the bottom device there is actually a network switch. So I just have that network switch with a panel in the back. If I need to create a redundant network or if I want to create a star topology, I have uh, a network switch on the back. Yes? Very good. The question is, if I'm running the multi-track from the computer to the console, how do I adjust the trim? Very good question because the console has the hidden that is for the mic pre, but when you're coming from the console, you don't have a mic pre in there. The console, the CL, the QL, they have two gains. They have the analog gain and they have a digital gain. So basically the analog gain is dealing with that mic pre. If you don't have a mic pre in there and you're coming in digitally, after the analog gain, we have the digital gain. So that will be the way that you will adjust the signal, the level of that signal coming from the digital domain. The digital gain, it's always available on the channel. So on the, on the input channel, you have analog gain and digital gain. Because I could be on my analog gain cranking that mic pre, and I could be with my digital gain trying to pull it back a bit. So doesn't matter if it's an analog or an input channel, you're always going to have that digital gain. On the analog, you have the analog plus the digital. If the channel is coming from a digital, for example, via Dante from your computer, then you don't have the analog option. You only have the digital gain. Any other question? All right. 
So once again, if you have any other question, we'll be here. If you have any other question and you think about it later, feel free to contact us. Feel free to contact the uh, Empire guys. I know they will be more than happy to talk to you and help you out. So guys, thank you for hanging. I know it's a long day and I know how it feels to sit there. So I appreciate you guys not falling asleep and paying attention. And I appreciate all your questions. So thank you very much. Try safe out there. Thank you. All right. So, to wrap this up, we'll give away some prizes, long awaited for some of you guys. Uh, we're going to start with the headphones. We got two more pairs of Yamaha headphones, uh, then we'll give away the GX5 and finally the ULXD. So, without any further ado, here we go for the first pair of Yamaha headphones, 6110. Like I said, your chances are getting better, you know? People have left. 6110, double check, going once, going twice. You got it? Hey, you got it, you got it. That's an advantage of, uh, of following us on all the social networks. There you go, Irving. Cool. All right, let's do the next set of uh, headphones. Six zero six eight. Uh, you guys are all close, but no cigar. Six zero six eight. You can tell Jose is uh, putting his hours on, on the job side. <laughs> All right, uh, 6050. 6050, there we go. No, yeah, no, no, false alarm. 6050, going once, going twice. All right, we'll pick another one. Six one two seven. Six one two seven. Hey, there we go. There you go. Enjoy. Nice pair of Yamaha headphones. Six two six one two seven. Cool. Um, all right. So now for the QSC GX five amp, we still need to pull it off the shelf, but uh, you're gonna get one either way. Here we go. Six zero zero one. Hey, there we go. We we're just holding out for you, man. Um, so, Aniceto, um, can we grab him a GX five <laughs> or a QL five or a CL five? It's fine. Anything with a five at the end of it is fine. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. All right, guys. Um. I do have some swag here uh, to give away. At the end of this, uh, come see me. I'll give you guys. I got uh, earbuds for every, or you know, earplugs for everyone, and then a few other things. Come see me. I'll give it to the first come, first serve, or something like that. I'll just decide who I like the best. Um, all right, for the final grand prize, where is it? One of a kind, Chrome. ULXD system. It makes you sing better. Six zero zero six. Six zero zero six. We have a winner. Hey! I thought we might be picking a few few numbers before then. Let's see. He's got it. 6006. Um, I'll grab you the box, but the whole system is over there, so we'll, we'll put it together for you. Then. Thank you. Um, guys, thank you for coming. Really, we really appreciate it. It's nothing without you. We appreciate your business. Uh, let us know what we can do for you to you know, further support you. If there's trainings that you guys are interested in, uh, let us know. 
you know, it's always good to get your feedback. Thanks again. Thank you, uh, QSC, Yamaha. Sure, round of applause for all these guys that helped make this possible. Thank you, Data Video. They stayed the, the whole time. That was really helpful. And uh, yeah, thank you all. Bye-bye.